Good afternoon and welcome to the Committee for a Workers International, CWI, weekly live broadcast on this uh, coronavirus and the pandemic, which is rocking and shaking global capitalism to its foundations. And since we were last broadcasting, there's obviously been new dramatic turns and twists in the situation, not least the unprecedented collapse in the price of oil, which took place uh, uh, last night, where it went down to negative pricing in the United States, which is a measure of the degree of economic recession and depression which is now likely to be posed on the global economy, which is going to have and is having absolutely devastating effects on working people. Now, the CWI has commented and analysed this crisis at each turn and events. Our latest uh, declaration and statement was published on our website today, Global COVID-19 Capitalist Crisis and Class Polarisation in the United States, where, of course, under the Trump dynasty, we see an incredible uh, plunging into a, a social uh, crisis and massive polarisation taking place there. And you can get our latest statement and our coverage of this crisis on our webpage, socialistworld.net. Now today, we are concentrating our discussions on developments in a key country in Europe. We see the crisis intensifying throughout the European Union, the prospect of the breakup of the Eurozone, of uh, even of the EU itself being posed, uh, particularly uh, with the anti-EU move which is developed in Italy. But today we're going to concentrate on a country with a marvellous tradition of class struggle, of France. And we're very privileged today to have with us uh, comrade Cécile Rimbaud, uh, a member of Gauche Revolutionnaire, who's joining us from uh, Paris. Now, of course, uh, if we can turn to uh, Cécile very quickly, uh, what's the current situation now in France? Because obviously under Macron, it's been one of the countries which has had one of the most uh, uh, sharpest uh, lockdowns uh, imposed. Uh, and of course, we've seen it take place following mass movements against Macron before this crisis uh, unfolded with the prospect of a general strike and a movement to overthrow Macron. So Cécile, could you outline for us today, what is the current situation in France well, um, not only have we had the, one of the most severe lockdowns, but we've also had, uh, we also have a very uh, high death toll. For uh, as for now, we we have more than twenty thousand people who died of the coronavirus. Two hundred to twenty thousand two hundred and sixty-five people exactly. Uh, it's a very high number. It's uh, very slowly starting to decrease, but it's still. Uh, it's still very high. Um, and we have to underline that the situation was made worse by the way the government handled the situation from the beginning. Uh, we are now in the sixth week of complete lockdown of the country, but there is still no mass testing of the populations. The hospitals are crowded uh, due to a shortage of beds, which is huge. And that is uh, because this government and the previous have cut 100,000 beds from the hospitals in 18 years, which is huge. Some patients even had to be transported in military convoys from Alsace from the, to the south of France, such is the shortage of means. The health sector workers have to work 60 hours a week, which of course is very, very dangerous for their own health and for the patient's lives, obviously. But they, have, they also have to work with insufficient PPE uh, and also masks that are so out of date that uh, somewhat the, the elastic band which you use to to put it on your head just snaps when you try to use it. Um, this is uh, this is a really incredible situation in such an advanced uh, country. Uh, some uh, some health sector workers have to make uh, their own protection, their own masks, uh, and it's uh, it's really a dramatic situation. The government is refusing to reopen factories which which could produce uh, masks enough for the whole country. And some regions have called for tenders, um, which means that now we have private companies making money out of such a vital product. But still, the government is refusing to open a production of masks and has rather import the masks from China via a plane. Uh, and each flight uh, to import a, a load of masks costs us 1.5 million 
uh, euro. And now articles are starting to uh, be published about the dubious, very dubious quality of the masks that are being important, uh, imported. And in, the, in other sectors, uh, workers have been forced to go to work in non-essential production in Amazon as well. Uh, we had uh, reports in the, from the US, Amazon workers going on strike uh, because they didn't want to be forced to, to go to work. We've had the same here, even though the, uh, there's not been strikes on the same scale as in the US. Uh, also in the in the car industry, which is absolutely non-urgent, <laughs> these workers should just stay at home and not be forced to make cars. Um, we've we've actually had a, a few walkouts by these workers, also in the post, in the retail and smaller workplaces. Um, but the situation for the workers is is really terrible. They have to work very long shifts. Um, thousands of workers in in interim have just lost their job and, and they're left without any income at all. And um, and uh, yet the government uh, is is really concentrating uh, all its measures for for the for the corporations. For example, um, it suspended the, the payment of loans and rents, not for the workers and the people, just for for the corporations and the hmm. multinationals. No, obviously an horrific situation. Now, if we look at the position in most countries for a temporary period, we'll see how long. The governments have been able to stabilise themselves a little bit at the outbreak of the crisis and even managed to increase their support, at least in the opinion polls. Was that the case uh, with Macron as well? Well, it was the case but just in the first week. Um, he made a speech on TV where he appeared very confident and very strong and very much in a position saying let's all unite, we're all in this together, but this really didn't last long. It was just a mere week and then his approval rate uh, went, went down. In one month, the insatisfaction rate with the government went from 46 to 58% right now. So it's, it's, really, it's really huge. And even though the majority of the population do approve of uh, the measures like the lockdown and social distancing because, well, if we have no PPE and uh, mass testing, well, we, we can't really do uh, otherwise, can we? Um, but Macron is, is really seen as uh, managing the, the crisis in a very bad way. Um, he's, he's seen as lying to the people, which he is. Um, just to give you an example, the former Minister of Health, um, uh, she's been faced with a year-long movement of strike in the health sector. Uh, and she's done nothing. Not she didn't give one euro to the health workers that were demanding more people just to, to just to save lives and and uh, and trick sick patients. Um, and this uh, woman, um, she knew as soon as January how bad the crisis would be. And not only she said nothing, she did nothing. She resigned from the government. And now the government is seen as their as their ally. And the first. Uh, period of the crisis, they said that the tests and the masks were not necessary, uh, only to back down just a week later, uh, obviously, um, and they prepared nothing to face the situation. And now we have uh, private labs uh, that are making money out of public fund um, testing uh, testing people. We have about, we think, 500 labs that are making profits uh, paid by the social security. Um, and now the government is, is saying that the end of the lockdown uh, is going to start on May the 11th, that they're going to reopen schools. But there are still uh, no plans for, for, for a mask to be, to be distributed for the, to, to the population. They say that the mask won't arrive until late June and they still want to reopen the schools uh, on May the 11th. So it's very clear that basically what they want to do is send the kids back to school so that the parents can go back to work and and, uh, and work 60 hours a week. Um, so there is a huge discontent against uh, against Mac 1, rightfully so. Yeah, interesting. Now, in many countries, we've seen the government's introduced all sorts of measures. Of course, in the CWI, we support any measure which is introduced that does protect the health uh, of workers and the population in general. But a lot of governments have used this as well to in introduce very authoritarian and un anti-democratic uh, powers. How has this been applied by Macron and the, uh, the, and the French government? We've had reports recently, yesterday in fact, in the press here uh, of outbreaks of some rioting in some of the Par Parisian uh, suburbs. 
And uh, how, how, how's the state and the uh, police responded to this uh, situation? Well, the, the riots in question um, have been caused. They're, they're still, they're, they're, it looks like that they might be spreading, but we, we don't know yet. We, we have very few information. Um, but it was caused by um, a young man who was riding uh, his bike. Um, was, he was a little bit fooling around. He didn't, he didn't wear a helmet. But uh, he got his leg broken by the police. So, uh, and this was filmed and the video went viral. It was all over Facebook, and etc. Um, and uh, and uh, most people who were uh, who were there, who, who witnessed the scene, said that the policeman who broke the man's leg uh, did it on purpose. Uh, so this is what started the rioting. Uh, we uh, at this point, we there is no we 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 don't know. <laughs> there's not been an inquiry to establish the facts. Uh, and by the way, if the inquiry was to be made by the police, we, we absolutely wouldn't trust the results. And we think that there should be an independent inquiry to uh, go into that. But it's it, this thing uh, uh, also happened in the context of the police feeling very powerful um, have, because they do have extraordinary rights to control uh, whoever they want. Um, so since the beginning of the lockdown, in order to go out to go shopping or or um, or whatever, but walk your dog or what have you, you have to have an authorization. It's a it's a thing that you download from a website that the government put up, and you have to put the date, the time at which you go out. It's signed. It's it's very restrictive, and the police have the right to control you to control if your uh, authorization is, is, is correct. And um, if it's not correct, uh, they can fine you up to uh, 135 euro, which is a lot, obviously. Um, I did not manage to find any recent figures, but just one week ago, um, they said that 12 million six controls took place by the police and more than 700, 760,000 more than 760 well um sorry i'm lost in my numbers here um, <laughs> we get the general idea thousand <laughs> euro worth of fines had been uh, had been imposed on the people some cities even have a curfew uh, it's the case of nancy for example in in eastern france and ob obviously some some policemen are are taking advantage of that um, they, and they themselves are the reflection of the authoritarianism of, uh, of the government. Macron, in his first speech uh, where he announced the lockdown, said six times, we are at war. Um, and ever since he was elected, he has been very undemocratic and repressive. Um, so one month ago, he implemented, he implemented this, this, this law of sanitary emergency, uh, which allows him to rule uh, by ordinance in many, many area. And this is something that we have qualified as a sanitary coup, really. Um, this, uh, this law allowed him, for example, to give 35 billion euro worth of, of gifts, of gifts in, in, in the social contribution cuts uh, to the to the multinationals and the and the corporations, the bosses, um, the law implements the possibility to um, uh, to implement working conditions that go against the labor code. For example, this this concerns working hour. Now, ev basically anyone can can allow uh, can be allowed to work up to 60 hours per week. Um, the bosses have the right to change your vacation uh, with only one day's notice. They can say. You're not going on vacation, uh, or you, I'm changing your dates, and you don't have a say, um, or or actually to force workers to to take their paid holiday when they should be in uh, in partial in partial unemployment, um, and this is at least until the end of the year. Um, but of course, they're they're going to use the uh, the the pretext of uh, the economic crisis to try to prolong these these measures to uh, enable the bosses to super exploit the workers. Okay, no, well, you touched there, Cecile, on the question of uh, the conditions that many French workers are having to confront and face at this uh, stage, and obviously, the conditions in the workplaces, the question of health and safety, is of vital importance during the course of this uh, pandemic. 
What's been the role of the trade unions and the trade union leadership in facing up to these attacks on the conditions and the rights of the French working people? Well, unfortunately, the, the, the answer of the trade union leadership was really terrible. Uh, the first thing they did um, uh, was to have a common declaration with the bosses. Uh, five trade union confederations, including the CGT, um, uh, signed a declaration with uh, th the three main bosses organizations calling for a social dialogue, uh, which is, of course, the opposite of what they should have done, um, because then it left the workers and the, and the trade union branches uh, all on their own to fight the aggression of the bosses. Uh, and until now, the declaration, this declaration was never retracted. Obviously, it was made by, by anger uh, from, from trade union members, uh, including local federations that have uh, formally protested against this, uh, which is something that we encourage through our, our trade union members and our, and our contacts. Um, also, with the proposal um, for a platform of demands to resist Macron's and the bosses' offensive, including the nationalization under workers' control and management of the health sector, the, the demand of re zero redundancies, the, the complete withdrawal of the pension reform, etc. Um, obviously, the union's role should not be to walk hand in hand with the bosses, but to organize the workers to discuss and, and prepare the fight back. The, the unions should strive to, to wage campaigns, uh, and lead the struggles in the workplace to resist the onslaught of the of uh, of the bosses. And uh, partly linked to that, we saw a, a report here um, that in France there was the organisation of a virtual online protest uh, attended by a hundred thousand people. How did that work? Well, um, this uh, this protest was originally called by France Insoumise uh, three weeks ago. Um, so the idea was we're going to all share the same hashtag and the hashtag was never again uh, at the same time. So on a Saturday at two, which is the usual time and, uh, and day of the week for demonstration, we are all going to share this, this hashtag and everyone feels free to add their own demands, their own uh, posters, what have you. Um, and the, the first edition of that was a huge success, more than a hundred thousand tweets uh, were posted just on Twitter um, and so that does not include Facebook and the other social networks um, we said that obviously we, we from the beginning we, we said that we would uh, call for the protests and participate in the protests which which we did we also said that other left forces to join the initiative including with their own demands which were which was totally possible and some of them did uh, the week after that uh, so what we did was we, we produced uh, virtual placards, <laughs> images, PDFs. Um, if, if you go on a website, on our website, you can you can see them, um, uh, which were made by, a, by one of our young comrades with demands such as mass testing for all those who need it, no to the 60 hours week, uh, for a shorter working week, um, and obviously for the expropriation and nationalization of uh, pharmaceutical companies and all the private health, uh, health uh, sector. So this protest is, uh, is, is still going every week. It's going to, to go on every week since, uh, well, until the end, we don't know when of the, of the lockdown. Um, and it was a good initiative because it, it allowed really to, to, uh, to have a collective form uh, to, express, mm -hmm. uh, to express the anger. Um, and also uh, to allow people, workers, uh, to formulate their own demands. So it, uh, it was really a good initiative. Yeah, no, it was a very good initiative that hopefully maybe we can take up in other countries. Now, in France, of course, it's had a very strong and radical left tradition. You've mentioned the uh, falling support for the Macron government. We saw prior to this crisis a disastrous showing for the French Socialist Party which of course has lurched dramatically to the right in uh, a similar way to New Labour had done in Britain. But maybe you could outline a little bit of how the left has reacted, particularly Mélenchon and his organisation La France Insoumise, the French Communist Party. How, how have they uh, responded to this crisis? And also, what is the main slogans and demands that uh, you in Gosse Revolutionnaire are putting forward uh, at this stage? Um, well, as far as uh, France Insoumise and uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon are concerned, um, well, they were 
uh, their reaction was the most interesting, the most coordinated. Uh, they reacted very quickly. Uh, also, after the Macron's announcements, first uh, first uh, announcement of the lockdown, etc., uh, always with an approach of criticizing the the so-called national unity that Macron was was trying to was trying to to implement, because uh, they have constantly been denouncing the 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 huge gifts to to the bosses. Um, and also, they have been the only force to uh, call for this for this kind of, of protest, the one that we have been participating in on Saturdays. Um, also, with the PCF, they were the only political force to vote against Macron's uh, emergency law. Um, so this is uh, something uh, that the PCF, the Communist Party, has uh, also done. Uh, but other than that, there were there were not many proposals uh, from their part uh, because of their usual tr- policy of trying to be a local imposition, opposition in the council, councils and administrations to to uh, soften, if you like, the the effects of of the government's uh, policy. They di- they didn't even call, sadly, to join the online protest organized by the by the France Insoumise. Um, now, as far as the, the PS is abstained, you mentioned the, the support that uh, for them that had fell, fell, fell back. Actually, on Macron's law of emergency, they abstained, uh, which proves that uh, that they're not uh, on the side of the, of the workers and the people. Uh, but actually, they're very much paralyzed by Macron's call for national unity. Um, they, they, they really failed to propose a credible alternative to Macron's policy for the public services, for instance, because obviously, as they've been in power previously, they share the responsibility for uh, for previous uh, austerity measures. Um, they don't have any mass support against the population, and they really are hated by the workers who remember uh, all their anti-worker and pro-capitalist policies. So they, they cannot represent an, a reliable alternative uh, to, to Macron, so they're really, they're really paralyzed for now. So as far as our own demands are concerned, our main demand was for the nationalization and expropriation of the the whole public sector and for the establishment of a, a public monopoly on the on the public health, um, and that would include taking up uh, huge French multinationals like the um, the, the multinational Sanofi, which is which makes huge profits out of selling drugs. Uh, so this has been our main point uh, our main point of focus as well as obviously refusing the authoritarian and anti-workers policy of Macron such as the the 60 hours working week right okay thanks that's interesting now we have of course in the past in France seen the threat and the growth of the far right particularly of Le Pen have they been able to intervene in this crisis and capitalize on the situation uh, to any extent well, they've been trying to, to position themselves as the opposition, as they always do. Uh, they've been trying to, they've been trying to, um, to, to play on the anger that exists, but, but they really do fail to propose any credible, uh, any credible alternative to defend the workers' rights. For example, their, their, their only slogans are focused on closing the borders, opposing the regulation of, in, of, uh, asylum seekers, as that would, as if that would change the lives of the ordinary people and the workers. Uh, and they even, they even had a proposal to organize the production of, of masks in the prisons, uh, whereas you have millions of people who are unemployed. So this really shows their, the, the anti-worker character of, uh, of their policies. And their demands honestly didn't have much echo amongst the larger layer who are, are far more focused on solidarity. Um, the the every every night here at eight also people go uh, out uh, uh, on their uh, at their windows and on their balconies to applaud for the health workers who are sacrificing so much so they don't have much echo for now um, uh, so they have been trying to align a little bit their demands on those of the left for example uh, now recently they've taken up the demands for for masks uh, and uh, and mass uh, text, testing um, but we saw. In the in the municipal election, uh, the local elections that took place just before the general lockdown, that their support didn't increase. Actually, they they, they managed to maintain um, their elected position in most areas, but but 
they didn't make any huge gains. So they're they're not a uh, they're not a, a, a big factor in the in the current uh, situation. But um, uh, it's not it's not a definite uh, thing. It could be it, they could be back uh, if the left fails try to uh, if the left fails to organize the anger, uh, uh, which is uh, which is huge to fight the government. Okay, so no, thanks. Um, now, f finally, Cecile, uh, I think, you know, like in all of the, the discussions that we're having and people are looking forward to the future, looking forward to the next steps in France, as the pandemic eases, that's a big, uh, as is a big question mark when that will uh, happen. But nevertheless, what are the prospects, do you think, for a resurgence of the struggle against Macron after this pandemic? Uh, because the movement was at quite a high point prior to the pandemic uh, hitting. There was uh, the general strikes uh, being posed and a big strike movement and protests that uh, had gone on for a whole period. And what's the prospect of that uh, struggle being taken up again, maybe on a higher basis and a more intense basis once the crisis is over? Well, as far as the struggle against the pension reform is concerned, actually the lockdown came in a moment where there was a little bit of a lull in, in the movements because of the lack of leadership, uh, not because of the lack of anger. Um, and obviously this, this anger has been accumulating uh, three, for, for years uh, and even more so since Macron came to power, you had the first explosion of anger just months after he was elected with the Gilets Jaunes. And indeed, as you mentioned, the, the, the mass strikes against uh, the, the complete uh, annihilation of the pension system, uh, which uh, very fortunately, put the workers' movements back uh, uh, to the front of the scene. Um, so, uh, as we've as we've said and analyzed before, Macron ha does not have support, uh, and the anger is is really not going anywhere. The main question is really how to channel uh, this anger, uh, not only through uh, common struggle, but also uh, politically. Now it's uh, it's a possibility. It's uh, uh, what's what's most probable is that there won't be uh, mass struggles before the summer, and the government is is uh, is obviously going to do um, everything that they can uh, for for this to to happen. It's not excluded, but because of the uncertainties that uh, remain. As far as, as you said, the end of the of this crisis is concerned, we, uh, the, the, the prospects for an immediate struggles after the lifting of the lockdown is not is not uh, is not uh, uh, clear. So um, the the um, the thing is, we've seen that France Insoumise's success in 2017 um, showed that the, there there was an echo for radical demand and for a radical program. Um, now the anger that exists against Macron and his austerity policies is is also um, showing uh, showing that uh, the Mélenchon's program to change society does have an echo. But we, what we've seen is that the loose form of a movement was not enough uh, to organize this anger and to tra transform it mm. into action and political perspective. So really, what we've been saying, and and, and it shows even more now, uh, really a mass party of the population and the workers is lacking. Um, what we lack now is, a, is an actual tool to organize, to wage campaigns, to take coordinated action. Uh, and more importantly, maybe um, to allow millions of people who are rightfully fed up with the way that society is run to discuss uh, the way out of, uh, of, of the nightmare of a society that capitalism really is uh, and to discuss the need for a democratic socialist society to answer the needs of, of the workers and the population. And this um discussion about why we need a party and how how can it be formed really needs to step up um after after the after the the end of the lockdown um especially because the reformist left uh, especially the greens are, are already in a, in a sort of race uh, to take the lead and uh, cap uh, like or drown the anger uh, of the workers to try to the, the dissolve it in some sort of uh, uh, the Greens, for example, they've, they've, they've just um, uh, issued a proposal for a, a broad national meeting of left and right to discuss the interest of the nation or what have you. So this, the discussion about the need 
of the Workers' Party, of a mass Workers' Party in the next period that needs to be formed is really crucial. And this will really determine uh, the outcome of the situation. So the Gauche Révolutionnaire, the, the French section of the CWI, has been developing this and we will step up our campaign for uh, France Insoumise and other forces to launch an actual uh, new party in the, in the, next, uh, in the next period. No, oh, that's a very important point, sir. And of course, I think we should congratulate uh, the Gauche Révolutionnaire on electing their first councillor in Rouen in the local elections which took place um, uh, just before this crisis uh, unfolded. Uh, Comrade Leila was elected uh, in her local municipality. So I'd like to thank Cecile for joining us today in what I think has been an extremely illuminating uh, report on the situation which has taken place in France. I would emphasize again, you can find more of our analysis and further reports on our webpage, socialistworld.net, but also you will find there a program, an emergency program that the CWI has published to assist workers and socialists and trade unionists in taking up the, the demands and fighting for their rights and interests. So if you're interested in exploring our ideas further, looking at the program that we're campaigning for, go and visit our website, socialistworld.net. If you don't like to take it a step further and get involved with us, uh, contact us through the website and of course we'll uh, get back to you and involve you in the struggles and campaigns that we're involved in. So I'd like to thank our viewers for joining us again this Tuesday afternoon and we'll be back next Tuesday afternoon, three o'clock London time, analysing a, a different aspect of, uh, of this pandemic and the new twists and turns in the uh, global crisis of capitalism. So in the meantime, keep struggling, fight for your rights and interests and stay safe. And we'd appeal to all those viewers who are sympathetic and supporters, join our ranks and join the CWI.